Hello and welcome. This is going to be my playthrough of Celasta. I'm going to be playing this over the next few weeks and I'm going to record our progress. It's going to be a little bit different this time. I'm going to try and commentate parts of the game as I go through it. I'm not going to commentate on every single uh, minute of the game, but anything that's important, any fights that need a bit of thought. Uh, but in this episode, episode zero, we're going to do the character creation. So I'm going to talk through my logic for what party I create, what characters I create and why. The game uh, requires you to have a party of four. So usually you create one main character and then you can pick some pre-mades. In this run playthrough I'm going to create uh, four individual characters and we're going to run them as a party all together. So we'll start off by building our characters. So the first choice you get is the uh, the race. Now I'm going to have a party of four. I'm going to have a paladin, I'm going to have a wizard, I'm going to have a cleric, and I'm going to have a rogue. So I've got a tank, a healer, a melee, and a ranged DPS. Start with a paladin. Paladin wants a good charisma, and it's going to want uh, a mixture of constitution, strength. Perfect one for this would be a half elf get their charisma score and they can also increase two other scores by one so we can give our constitution and our uh, strength a bit of a perk. We also got dark vision which helps everywhere. Um, we also get this fey ancestry which helps our save and throws a little bit so we are going to be picking our half elf. Human is another good option because they get a plus one to everything but they do some of these extra bonuses they're just a stat, stat boosting class snap boosting race I should say. Picking the paladin. Now when we're playing the game as well, certain classes get given choices, subclasses or paths to uh, just to spec into as they level up. So we're gonna have a quick look at where we're gonna go. Um, in this game I'm going to be having he's gonna be really playing as a tank so anything we can do to uh, absorb damage protect our party is where i want to be so we are going to be having both the devotion when we get there so we get things like shield a little bit of healing a little bit of buffing the spell magic uh, so we'll be using the oath of devotion when we get there what's nice about the game as well is you get this sort of character information on the left hand side of the screen that shows your your class as you uh, as you're specking it up, so keep an eye on the left as it helps to remind you what you've picked already. All the normal paladin skills, I'm not going to go through everything on there. Uh, one thing we do want to make sure is our base equipment. I'm going to be playing a sword and shield build, so I want to make sure I've got a long sword and a shield. I'm not going to be playing a two handed uh, battle sort of uh, max damage paladin to so one we sword and shield select a deity so this is purely for role playing benefits uh, you've also got your alignment as well it doesn't make too much too much of a uh, of a choice on the game other than some dialogue from the player that's pretty close to what is uh, is it is fits with the character is a lawful good alignment So now we're going to pick our background. Now background is uh, a lot of it was for thematic benefits, but it also requires you to have a, it gives you options such as your uh, other proficiencies you get, whether you can do any crafting in this game. And I must admit, I'm not too familiar with what the crafting does other than it's good to have good coverage of all your characters. Um, and then any other languages and, and equipment you start with. So we've got the choice of academic, acolyte, aristocrat, lawkeeper, lowlife, philosopher, sellsword, spy, and wanderer. Now, there's two main choices really is the academic. You get proficiencies that are useful here, but you also get the ability to, uh, where is it here, enchanter. It gives you the ability to enchant weapons, which is quite an important part of the game. Certain items can only be created magic items going to be created through enchanting so that is where the the real benefit of an academic comes in the other option is a philosopher which is a little bit more on the healing side you get your medicine and persuasion uh, backgrounds or benefits 
but then you can also craft herbalism to get the ability to craft potions. I'm going to be using the herbalism kit with my cleric, so in this one I'm going to be choosing the academic. Background personalities and background flags, again this is purely down to our uh, uh, role playing experience and what the game does for uh, dialogue options, so pick whatever makes sense. I'm going pretty much awful good, which means I'm picking stuff on this side. And you can pick things twice just to really hammer home a, uh, a, a trait, but again it's purely for uh, role playing purposes. Now we've got our stats, so um, a lot of people will say use the standard array because that's the fairest way of doing it. Some people can do point by and you can get it however you want to because it's fair. I'm in the camp of it's a single player game, it's only me playing the game. I don't feel guilty sitting here a few minutes rolling the dice until we get a, a good set of rolls and this is a very good set of rolls so we're going to be sticking with that. Don't criticise me in the comments, but that's how I'm going to play the game. Um, that's my my prerogative. So I want this guy to be strong. So I'm going to be putting my 18 in strength. I'm going to be putting my 16 in constitution. And I'm going to be putting my 15 in charisma. Charisma is where you get your spell slot slot, which is where I want to get the... Um, I want to get the most benefit. A lot of the spells I'm going to be using are smite, not healing or buffing spells, so it's extra damage. And I'm going to bump this up to a... Uh, I cannot. I'm just going to bump that up to an 18, but we can do that later on. What we can do instead is bump up our constitution, and what we'll probably do as well is bump up our dexterity. And these are not going to make any difference at all. So priority for me, strength, Constitution and Charisma are the three you want. Dexterity obviously useful for any ranged weapon I may pick up, and I probably will pick up a bow as an option. Uh, and then these really are dump stats, which don't have too much um, too much influence over your character. But they're decent spread, uh, pretty strong character so far. So these are your skills. So what are your character going to be proficient at? So you get two skills as part of your ancestry. We also get two class skills, so for a paladin, we're going to want um, high athletics. We're also going to want intimidation. And I think I'm also going to want perception. I think I've done this and miss. There we go. And athletics, and I'm going to want one more, which doesn't make too much difference. I think I'll have persuasion. So, just to Roger, athletics is going to be a lot of jumping around in this game, climbing up things. If you want high athletics, just to be able to make sure you make those checks. Intimidation, we are going to be the leader of the party, so we want that. Uh, persuasion, again, trying to make people do what you'd like them to do. And my last one was. So I believe, just to give people, um, uh, get people on your side. You'll notice anything here with this little eye in the corner, it's not currently implemented in the game, so anything with an eye doesn't actually help you. So uh, just bear that in mind now. It may be implemented in the game later on, it's not at the minute. This is what we are proficient with. So we've got our simple weapons, martial weapons, all the different armors and a shield, which is exactly what we want. And then we've got our languages. Now languages are, um, as long as you've got coverage across all your party, that's the main thing. So I am going to have, we've got Common Druidic Elvish, Old Tyramane and Spies Codebook. So I think I'm going to pick up Draconic on this character. And for some reason that's, that's fine, let's change that out. Other languages, I think we're going to have Dwarvish and, let's say, Giant. I am going to have... My other characters are going to be different races, so I think they're going to pick up the other ones as well. You just want good coverage so everybody can speak the various languages. Part of the game that often takes as long as you want. I will put a quick cut in here if you want to just run to the finished article, but I will uh, I'll slow down the character.
as taxing as I expected. Undignified, but I spotted necessary. a trap of sorts. Undignified, but necessary. Okay, so this is the character. Uh, I'm just going to use some random names unless I can think of any names specifically. Um, he is a half elf after all, so he's going to have his green eyes. He's going to have, I haven't gone for the long blonde hair, anything like that. Lightly greenish, uh, sorry, green eyes, brown hair. Fairly built, no scars of notice. So there is our paladin. Right, the next character we're going to do is going to be our Cleric. So a Cleric is going to be our healer, and they use Wisdom as their base stat. So we're going to look at the Dwarf, and specifically we're going to look at the Hill Dwarf. Now, Cleric, he is going to be mainly for buffing, support, healing, and if he does do any battling, he's going to be a melee character. So we want someone with a high constitution, and obviously a plus as to Wisdom is brilliant. Dwarves have got extra hit points, uh, they've also got resistance to various poisons and things, and the extra constitution means uh, more likely to save your constitution saves, and you just need a bit more tanky so you stay in the fight longer. So we are going to be picking the Hill Dwarf. We're going to be picking a Cleric, now something that will come on to shortly is our Divine Domain, so this is your subclass of your Cleric. We're going to be picking the Bread and Butter one, which is the Life Domain, which gives us our extra buffing spells, cure spells, healing, and that's where we're going to do it. And most importantly, it gives us our proficiency with heavy armor, which means we're going to be very bulky, hard to kill. So that's what we're going to be looking for. Something we are going to do as uh, a change to our base equipment is we start with a mace, or we can be using a warhammer. Now, a warhammer is just more damage. Better than a mace, it's also versatile, so we'll be picking the Warhammer. That's the only change we'll make to that. Okay, so there is our cleric. Now, in order to pick our life domain, we have to pick a right deity. So each of these deities have their own different subclasses. In order to get the life domain, we need to be this deity. There we go. Now for a cleric, uh, we have got similar options, similar options in fact to the paladin. In this case, we are going to go with the philosopher. Now this philosopher is going to give us proficiency with a herbalism kit, which means we can craft our potions. Uh, we also get a boost to medicine as well. So we are going to be a philosopher, and we're still going to be, we're going to have a good party, so there's no going to be any, again it doesn't matter for because it's role playing purposes, but we are going to be kind and we're also going to look after others and basically just do good, do good in the world, should we say. So we're going to be a kind and gentle person, make sure that we are healing those, giving aid to who we can. So that's going to be our, our cleric background. Now, again, I don't have any problem rolling these a few times until we get nice, juicy rolls. Uh, I think that's pretty good. So we will do stat priority for a cleric. You're going to want wisdom. We're going to want strength and then constitution. Now, because we've got a plus two in constitution and a plus one in wisdom, I can put a 17 here to get an 18. I can put a 16 here to get 18. Brilliant. We're going to put our 15 in strength. Dexterity isn't as important because uh, we're wearing heavy armor, so we won't get the proficiency for we won't get the added benefit of a high dexterity on our armor class to be fair none of these are really that important in terms of our um, 
of order, so I think we're going to put a 14 in tech, we're going to put 15 intelligence, and our charisma is going to be our double staff. Okay. So here, for, for our uh, proficiencies, so we are going to, we only get two, I think we are going to do, uh, we've already got medicine from our background, we are going to do insight, and we're going to do religion. Very easy on that one. Languages again, so here we've got common, druidic, dwarvish, and spies codebook. Now we got draconic and giant in the previous, uh, the previous character our paladin, so this one we're going to have goblin, and we're probably going to pick orcish. And again, it's probably not too important because a lot of these have got little eyes next to them, not yet implemented, but in case they are, we're ready for it in the future. Now, because we are a cleric, we are going to get our first set of spells and cantrips, so we get to pick our three cantrips. Now, really, in the game, there's a few things that we need to take uh, we need to take attention to. Light sources and what you can see and what others can see of you will is massively important in this game, and that depends on whether you've got advantage, disadvantage, or nothing, or neutral in a combat. So the ability to cast light or generate a light source is invaluable, so we're going to be picking up light. We are also going to pick up our sacred flame, which gives us a chance to do a little bit of ranged damage, because mainly we're going to be a melee character. So it gives us the option of doing something in a range uh, capacity to have sacred flame. And really the third one is kind of up to you, but I'm going to pick Spare the Dying, just because it allows us to stabilize an ally if they do indeed go down, rather than just outright healing. So we've got Light, Sacred Flame, and Spare the Dying. And once again, I'm going to quickly uh, build my character, I'll put a timestamp if you want to jump ahead and finish up. Again! Wait, a trap. Okay, so this is our Finnish cleric, Bearden Redstone. He's fairly well worn, he's been around the block a few times. Uh, so he's got a fairly grey hair, oldish look, uh, and a more traditional cleric looking beard. So this is our. Character which oh, it's not going to be called that then. It's going to be called. There we go, Bjorn. There we go, there's our cleric done. Now, our next character is going to be our wizard. 
So Wizard is going to be a, uh, a major source of spell damage, control of the battlefield, etc, uh, etc. Et so we want a, uh, a character that has a intelligence score, or intelligence buff, as Wizards use intelligence as their main source of uh, spell casting. So we can pick the High Elf. Uh, which has got a plus one to intelligence. We also get plus two to dexterity, which means we get a little bit of an armor class bonus. Uh, because as a, as a as a wizard, you're often wearing robes, you can't wear armor, although we're going to come to that in a second. Uh, you are a bit squishy, so anything you can do to improve your, deck, your armor class helps no end, so we're going to have a high elf in a sense. Going to be the wizard. Pick our wizard. Now we do get our different arcane traditions. So again, at level two, you'll be able to pick which, um, which how we specialize the class. We've got four different options. Shock Arcanist is kind of your glass cannon build almost. High damage, um, high output kind of mage. Lawmaster, is really about what you do outside of battle, being able to have high ability checks and learn about things. You also gain additional spells each time you level. You don't get an extra spell slot, you get an extra spell level, which isn't as useful. Green Mage is more around sort of, I wouldn't say debuffing, but it's more, it's more support magic as well. So we are going to be going with the Shock Arcanist when it comes to that time level two. So here, uh, equipment, it isn't going to make any difference what we have uh, on our starter kit. I'm going to keep a quarter half on our component pouch. Uh, it doesn't make any difference which staff we're going to be using, because hopefully we're going to be casting spells all the time. Now, background for a wizard. You might think that maybe an academic is a good one to go for, because you get your arcana checks. You also get the ability to enchant because an acolyte is a really good one as well because you get your herbalism kit you get the religion etc it sounds it fits well the best one probably to go for really is something that it's a bit uncommon but a cell sword now cell sword you get athletics and intimidation but this is the real take home uh, here it's you get medium armor proficiency so you'll be able to wear armor and still cast spells you potentially become a battle mage you don't get any um or you do get a you're also able to craft uh, ammunition as well with smith's tools so we have a different a, a different coverage as well so currently we've got herbalism we've got enchanting we've also got smith's tools we've now got a third different crafting one there as a wizard i think we're going to be slightly chaotic um so I think we're going to be looking at the these sorts of things. It's still going to be kind, but it's going to be more uh, chaotic in uh, in approach. So yeah, we're a soul sword uh, wizard. Once again, I'm going to get my rolls. And that's not terrible. So I think we're going to stay with that. So. Um, what we're going to have is, in this build, you want your intelligence to be the highest one you can possibly be. So I think, actually no, I'm not going to be greedy and try and roll. I'm going to be greedy, make it even better. So we're going to put our 17 in intellect, so we get an 18. We want to prioritize constitution as well. And also we want to prioritize dexterity, so I think we're going to go max hit points, max intelligence. And we get our plus two from dexterity, so we're getting a good boost from there as well. Now, as a mage, you would usually say that strength is not important, but in this game, strength is the ability to carry uh, materials, carry your backpack, and everything weighs a lot, a ton. So you very, very quickly become encumbered. So I'm going to put 13 in strength, I'm going to put 13 in wisdom, and my dumb stat once again is going to be charisma. So there we go. Now we've got our proficiencies. So for a wizard, we are probably going to want Arcana. 
we are probably going to want history and all that does is push buffs what we're already very good at we've now got these are all the things we are proficient in and the media armor is the critical one languages again we've got most of these um, I don't think we picked up halfling yet but it is in the game so I think we'll have uh, Terran Carter, just to make sure we've got coverage. Now we've got our spells, so we'll be able to pick our first level spells, and then we'll be able to, sorry, our cantrips, then we'll pick up our first level spells. So, cantrips, you get one for being the ancestry, ancestry, can't say it. Now really, as a, a mage, you want to have a cantrip, you want to cover off all things you really want a way of creating light similar to the, um, the cleric so we're going to pick light as one of them we're then going to pick our direct damage which really is a choice between firebolt and ray of frost one does more damage one does uh, slightly less damage but it also then slows the target so i'm going to pick firebolt i am then also going to pick I'm going to pick um, this little spell here, so it helps to break up a concentration check. So I'm going to be doing that one. And then I'm going to be doing a, so this is our range damage, this is going to be my melee damage. So if someone does get up close to us, we can shock and grasp them to get rid of them. And if it dazes them, it allows us to disengage without actually, for the opponent to get an attack of opportunity. So now we're on to our first level spells. <clears throat> Similar theme. Burning Hands is a good one, which covers off a cone in front of you to target a group of enemies. So that's a bit of AoE damage. We've then got Color Spray, which is AoE sort of disarm or causes them to uh, um, to blind them, so it puts them at a disadvantage. We've then got Detect Magic, so this allows us to figure out is there any magic near us, has items got any magic potential, so we're going to pick that up. Similarly, we're going to have Identify, so if we do find a weapon or a piece of armour that is magical, we can identify it and work out how useful it is to us. Magic Missile is the bread and butter, it's the perfect weapon, perfect spell because it always hits. And finally, Shield. Shield is a hugely important spell that allows us to uh, negate damage. So shield is our sixth spell. Once again, I'm going to quickly go through my character build. Uh, I'll put a timestamp if you want to jump to the finished article.
That was something. Good kill. Stop. A trap. Stop. A trap. Okay, so this is our finished wizard, Emera. Uh, she is a uh, high elf, very elfy style haircut, a little bit of flamboyant colours with the red hair, slightly bluey green eyes. Uh, relatively young as well. She's, although elves look older than they are, she still looks like uh, she's not been around for too long. Uh, still got plenty to learn. So that is our wizard. So now we have our final character. So our final character is going to be a rogue. Now rogues want high dexterity. They also want high um, sort of stealth abilities. So we again we're going to go for the elf, the elf, and the, or the high elf. But this time we're going to pick the sylvan elf. We get a dexterity of plus two. We also get a wisdom of plus one, which helps with the sort of stealthy side of it. We could pick the halfling which is another good one or the, so the marsh halfling is a good one to pick because you get dexterity and constitution um, but I prefer the elf or the different things here that you get as a saving against charm <clears throat> and also proficient in survival and athletic skills so we're going to have silver elf we're going to be a rogue and once again, we're going to get an archetype. Now, this happens again at level 3. I am going to pick the thief. The thief seems to make the most sense. Um, you've got cunning action, allows you to do another action on your turn. So you can choose to do like a run away or a disengage. Um, and it's just the more sort of bread and butter type of rogue. Dark Weaver gives you a little bit of action towards poisons, um, which is going to become useless when we pick our background. Shadowcaster is your sort of arcane trickster, which I don't want to do in this because we've already got our wizard, so we're just going to be a straight up rogue, so we're going to be a thief when it gets to level 3. Now one thing we are going to want to do is change our starting equipment, so a rapier does a lot more damage. However, we are going to want to be dual wielding, so we are going to have a short sword, which allows us to have a, uh, we'll probably have a dagger in our offhand, and we'll be able to bonus action attack with our dagger. Rapier can't do that. Okay, so we'll be doing that. So we've got our rogue, we've got our starting equipment, uh, and we are going to do our background. So background, um, <coughs> what we're going to do here is we're going to the spy. Now the spy gives us proficiency in stealth and deception which are two things we're going to want to do because where a lot of the damage from a rogue can come from is its backstab or sneak damage so we want a lot of stealth and deception. Again we get the poisoner's kit so we've got another or a fourth different type of crafting kit which is important. Now although it's a good party Although it's a good party, we are going to have, we're still going to be a good character. So, um, he's certainly not lawful, but he is going to be um, looking after himself a fair amount. And uh, he's going to be a little bit greedy. So that fits with a the theme of a rogue of look after oneself first, worry about others later on. Now, once again, I'm going to do my re-roll my dice, try and get something that is uh, interesting. Without being too greedy, I think that will probably do us. So, for our rogue, we are going to want high dexterity, obviously, so we're going to put our 16 in there, because we can't go any higher than an 18. I think we're going to put our constitution as 17 and we're going to put our wisdom at 16 as well so that helps with our 
uh, proficiencies. Now for me, again, like I said about the wizard, strength you need to be able to carry certain amounts of materials and items in your backpack. And I'm going to put it that way around. So although blue is something I should have mentioned at the start, each of these blue ones are meant to be your sort of three optimum stats. This is really designed if you want to be an arcane trickster. If you're not, it doesn't matter. So as long as it's these two, you're fine. This one is a uh, this one uh, doesn't have to be blue for the, the rogue we're playing. So 16 strength, 18 dex, which is really all about damage. Decent constitution, and we're okay everywhere else. Now for our rogue, we're going to want acrobatics, absolutely. We're going to want insight. We're going to want intimidation. And I think we're probably going to want persuasion. Now what we also want to do here is put extra points into stealth, our class ones, because we're going to be sneaking around. And because of the thieves tool, so we get thieves tools being a rogue. This is what allows us to open all those doors, open all those locks. So we are going to be picking this one up because if we can't get through the door, we miss what's behind there and generally it's going to be loot. So final languages, I think we've covered off nearly everything now. I don't know if we've got old Tiramin yet. I think we've done everything else. I might just be doubling up. So let's go Terra, just to make sure. So, final character, I think it's going to be a female again, so I'll give a timestamp to when we when I finish the character, uh, but I'll go ahead and create him while we're, while we're waiting. Can't say I'm surprised. I am you one. Hold it. Well deserved. I know kids who do that faster. Easy on your ankles. Come on, push! Look, a secret door. Okay, here is our rogue, Kiana. Uh Gone for the slightly battle scarred, elven look, hair across her face, make sure she's uh, not easily seen or recognised. Dark hair, uh, minimal features, 
just as you can blend into the shadows. Again, fairly young age, but she's been around the mill a little bit just to cut her teeth and uh, learn her craft. So. so that is our character creation. So this is going to be the end of part zero. Uh, what I am going to do is make sure we put our uh, party together. And then in the next episode, we are going to kick off our playthrough adventure, starting with these four characters. We've got our paladin, we've got our cleric, we've got our wizard, we've got our rogue. So, thank you for watching, and um, if you like what you see, let me know in the comments, and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.